my father is very famous there. So people have like expectations. And a lot of people, it's like because you're a daughter of someone, maybe you even suck at it. Want to watch the World Series? Hi, I am Brian Lally, Hollywood native, and you're about to watch the show, Brian Lally, Hollywood native. Sitting here with my partner in crime, Scott Williams. Scott, who's on this phenomenal show today? Today, Brian, we have a great guest, Josetti Hurtado. Or Jojo, as I like to call her. She got a hell of a story coming from Peru. Her father grew up poor, ended up having two popular children's TV shows. Jojo had done some hosting on her father's show, and she was also on TV shows in Peru, but she wanted to come up and make it in Los Angeles, and she did. She found a whole new outlet for her creativity. As an actress and then as an influencer. Makeup, hair, fashion, it seems that everything she picks up turns to gold. It's a great interview, so you're going to hear her story, and you will enjoy it. She's a house of fire. I'm so surprised at how legit is all this, Brian. Look at how many cameras. Look at all the cameras that there are. One, two, three, four, five, everything. I'm amazed at people with nails that can work the social media like that. I mean, just in general right now because in October, they're gone. Really? Because I do, um, like, work with prosthetics for Halloween. Okay. I turn into everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can't work with prosthetics with nails. Really? Okay. No. And then you use a lot of, like, paint and then they get into, yeah, it's just... And also, I don't like to certain characters, like with nails. Right. Just, I think it breaks the whole thing. Yeah. And plus, that's my moment that I can we're, we're prove right. that I'm, like, I'm a multi actor. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it gives me that. Because I start from zero, like, with no makeup, no mm -hmm. nothing, like, my short hair, like, nothing. Yeah. So, I kind of, I like when they see me raw turning into that. Mm -hmm. And then I have the whole year when they can see me like this, too. Yeah. So. Right. That's awesome. What is the big, big one you did? You know what I mean? That got all the hits, the prosthetics, and you transformed into something. Oh, my something. God. The hardest one was, to me, the Grinch. Right. The that Grinch was it. was like, oh, yeah. I had Grinch hair like for But it was long. amazing. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It went viral for you? Yes, it was, yeah. it was a lot. Yeah. It was one of my first times with prosthetics. But it's one of those things that... I like projects that are, I'm, re I'm very realistic, like what are my limitations, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was like, I can pull it off because it was my first time doing prosthetics, but okay. it turned out to be amazing. I yeah. was, uh, was, I a almost cried when I saw myself. I no, it was crazy. It. And that's on your Instagram? Yes. Yeah. Like I was watching with a friend our videos that we did at home. Mm -hmm. And then I remember back then I pulled like some images when I used to go to like school with you. And right. it's cool because I had my dark hair, no right. fillers, no botox. Right. <laughs> it was like a younger JoJo, so yeah, right. but it's the, I like those things because there is history there. Right, so. right. But that's what this podcast is about—the growth. Yeah. Where you started. Yeah. Your acting. You were doing telenovelas. You doing soap yes. operas in yes, in, in Peru. Uh huh. Like I always say, Peru. He likes. Yeah. He likes to switch it there, <laughs> right. Peru. He can't say Peru. 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 <laughs> Peru. But yeah. oh, that's where Claudia. Claudia mm -hmm. made me say Peru. <laughs> Claudia, I haven't seen her like. Yeah, she did a movie. Claudia Solis, our friend. That's my Sabrina. <laughs> of course, you're my, my Mija. I'm, I'm closer. <laughs> 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 I like, I adore Brian. I always say, I come for Brian anywhere. Like, Brian is really, and he doesn't even know how important he is for me. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even know. Like, and I don't see him. I never see him. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. that's the thing. And he is. Yeah, I know. He's a legend. He changed my life, too. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, you have certain places that you go for your spiritual life. And then you have other places that you learn art, right? Brian is like, kind of like that person in the middle that mm -hmm. I feel like I can open up to him and nothing. It's going to like impress him enough, like to be like, oh my God, you did that. Because that's his job to like figure it out like you <laughs> know like because yeah, he do. works with so many like yeah. characters and doing all this so anything that i tell him like is not gonna like really like judge me or surprise me right and if something really upsets me we're gonna find out and maybe we're gonna use that for my art so it's like it's yeah. a winning winning so it's like i have a friend i have a mentor there and then i'm like I don't like to bottle things up, but then I also like, okay, how can I use this mm -hmm. and benefit or how can I feel better after this and how right. can I use it for my art or anything? So that's when Brian comes in. So I was like, yeah, 
Don't yeah. make me cry. Don't make me cry. <laughs> but it's true. I'm like, I, I always tell like, um, I, I appreciate I tell it. people, yeah. Georgia, I always, I'm glad we're always been in touch. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I know. always in touch. Brian is like one of the persons that, because when I started like acting or anything in TV, I've never had like any ed- acting education there. So, but I worked there. So when it was time to work, and my father is very famous there, so people have, like, expectations. And a lot of people, it's like, because you're a daughter of someone, maybe you even suck at it. Mm-hmm. But also because I don't have scandals in my country, which is, like, very common, like, famous people that are my age there. They were, like, there were no complaints about my crap, like, how I was performing in this acting jobs, like, soap operas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But they don't really know my training. And it's not because I'm not that famous, but it's just... Uh, this it's not news everyday news it's like oh we caught just adding acting classes so it's not like really like an everyday news yeah but i like here and there that's why i share it i don't care if it gets one like two likes or three likes it's like whenever i have an interview there they pull up all my my trainings and right. that's why now i film everything i like to keep it all when i'm doing prosthetics I film behind the scenes. I just leave a camera like that rolling. Because mm-hmm. then when they do the interviews, oh my God, um, this had, I don't know, millions of this and went viral or whatever. I like them to see the behind job. Yeah, the process. And maybe in the moment, yeah, and maybe in the moment doesn't have any views at all, but it's my proof of like, no, this is what it took right, for yeah. that. Or I'm like, well, I'm good at this because I trained this yeah, way. Nothing so. just handed to you. No, You're no. like working for it. No, I was telling when I went over your place, you know, you got one bedroom, you got living, you got the dogs, you got everything cool. Oh, everything then you else. go in the other bedroom, that's your studio, and it is just packed. Yeah. You got lights and now cameras and, and makeup and fashion, and, you, and got, can, you got everything in there. And I have a lot of sites that of me that I like because when I was. Uh, since I was 11 to 16, we had also circus business with my dad. But it wasn't like the circus, like me being like one of those circus acts. Yeah. In Peru, in 28th of July, it's the Independence Day. But around those times, there are circles around the world, including like the big circus. It's like from international circus that are coming. But then also the locals. Mm-hmm. And a lot of famous people put their names into the circus. So the first part, you have all the circus acts. And then the second part is whatever you have to offer. So, I mean, whatever. But for example, for us, me and my dad, we created kind of like a whole play that it had songs for kids and uh, like a storyline and everything. So it was the circus of me and my dad. So that connected me a lot with kids. Then is when it comes, of course, my passions for Disney and all those things, because I do love all that. So it's just that, I like to work with all these aspects of me, but living in my small apartment, I couldn't fully unleash that because it's pace. That's one thing. Like with the work I do, like I like fashion, I like makeup, but then I like Disney and like where I'm going to save all this like Disney dresses because they now I work with companies that they send me Disney backpacks and Disney Mm -hmm. outfits and I wear a lot of wigs. And it's not just me. It's me and my sister. So it's the two of us. So everything's double in the house. (laughs) So I was like... (laughs) It's a lot, but it's, I'm happy. Right. So did your dad have the show when you were born or how old were you when your dad, no. he has two shows, yes? My dad started as a clown oh, when okay. he was 18 years old. Wait, well, you trained as a clown too, yeah, right? That's oh, cool, yeah, that's it. Cool. That's where yeah, my yeah. name, Jojo, I think I put it there yeah. on that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my dad was a clown. Well, he started cleaning houses and then this lady had a... Uh, a company with two daughters that like dedicated show for kids like at home, you know, when you right. like just yeah, yeah, yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. But they also rented a rented. I don't know exactly how it went the story, but they had a show in a theater, like it's you know, like a small theater right. for kids. Right. And then he was looking up for a partner for one of his daughters. <laughs> he was looking yeah. can, can I have it? he went so he was looking for a Thank partner right. of one of his daughters. And then they did an audition, and that's how my dad started as a clown in the in the theater. And at night, like, it was the adult show, like, more like a musical, things like that. That's how he met with my mom, because right. my mom was in that show at night, okay. like, as a dancer. Right. So I grew up in that environment. And then my dad, uh, he's a com- he was a comedian for years. And um, but a comedian like impersonator, he impersonated women, but mostly <laughs> even women because he was just good at it, like right. better with women. I'm telling you, like even 
from the American part, like Liza Minnelli, like Madonna okay. is done. Yeah, yeah. back, yeah. yeah. But then... Um, awesome. Yeah, I mean, long story short, but then he stopped and he was like more dedicated to work. He loves, he does a lot of like social help and, and his other business that has nothing to do with art. Right. But then he got back with his show that now he has. It's been eight years. Okay. And it's a four hour show live on Saturdays. Wow. Every Saturday. And it's a family show. Like it has interviews. It has uh, uh, interviews to politicians, to musicians, to like a, all, a lot of famous people. Mm -hmm. And then it has all the social help, which is the most important part for us, which is helping all the poor people in my country that on top of that are like sick and then have like different needs. Mm -hmm. So through the show and donators, they, they help raise them. Money. Yeah, they, yeah, they raise the money and help and, and solve the cases. Now the show is gonna start airing in Mexico, so we're very excited about that. Oh, okay, yeah, That's awesome. And I was a co-host for the show for two years and a half. Okay, but in that in between, of course, I always loved art. I did the circus, and then I wanted to do acting, but I had no acting education. I kind of did any when I was eight years old. Right. But that was one of the things I feel it was in my vein is is like I had that talent for that. But if I wanted to take the next step, which it was like actually acting. Mm -hmm. that that's when I went to New York Film Academy because I like the programs that they had for someone like me that didn't know anything, let's right. say. It has a little bit of everything. And, and then you can pick from there what's going to work for you and you like it. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking more into that for techniques once that I knew what I was doing. And then it's when I looked for Meisner. And then I went to James Franco School, which Brian was there. And then I fell in love with him, so I don't care everywhere yeah. he goes, I'll follow him. <laughs> and yeah, then right. I'm just like Brian everywhere. So yeah, and I haven't had any more training. I mean, I did clowning like training too, which is very, um, it's very similar somehow to Meissner because right. it's very famous there. It's like the technique. What was it called? This actor, the one that died. Oh. Robin Williams. Robin Williams. He with well, Patch Adams. He did. Right. So based on Patch Adams is this training. Oh, the okay. clowning training, right. which is therapeutic. And he always goes to Peru. Right. Yes. So, okay. but in order to help others, you have to solve a lot with you. So, right. I think like the most I can socialize it with Meisner or techniques like that is that usually you have the fourth wall or some, or, you know, nobody exists. But here in clowning, anything you're feeling, you have to like look at people in his eyes. So you need to let well, them yeah. know. So that's like, if someone is putting you, let's say on blast on something, you turn and you let people know in their eyes, which is even harder because right. now you're not only experiencing certain feelings, but now you have to like make sure you connect him with the people with people's eyes, letting them know how you're feeling. Yeah, so that was a tough one there. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a friend I grew up with. He became one of the most famous jugglers in the world, and mm -hmm. he was he was unbelievable as a kid. Grew up in the neighborhood, Edward uh, Jackman, and he came to study Meisner. And then when he, he studied for a couple of years and his act, as you're saying, is looking people in the eye and doing, you know, comedy bits and stuff and working off everybody in the room. Anything, as you yeah. said, Peter, someone put you on blast, anything that comes up, it got even better. He had the, he had the ability. I mean, he was a famous juggler and then just taking a class like that just really helped him out. I love trainings like that, that are like the most, like when you're really connecting with people. Because once I, I think like the hardest thing is that people look it into each other's eyes. People just always try to hide because you're afraid, you're nervous, whatever. But I love it because once that you do it, like you, you're just not afraid. Yeah. It's met after get, that, yeah, that. that's it. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. And so when I started co hosting the show with my dad, we come through this stairs where it's like audience like sitting. Mm -hmm. So when we come the stairs, like of course you get one, I have heels. And then I'm always like afraid, like because I'm nervous if I'm gonna be shaking. I mean, I hold my dad and my dad was like like these like step hard. He was always telling me that. And with right. your right so he has this thing, right foot first yeah, and okay. things strong. So and I will hold him from the hand. Right. But then the next thing, when it, he starts like saying, hello, everyone, welcome to whatever. And then he'll like, let like, I know it's like, oh, my God, at the beginning, it's coming. My turn right. too. It's like, right. But then what I did is like, I will look everyone is in the eyes. It's like, thank you so much for coming. Like, so once you start like connecting, then you sure. make them feel part of your, sure. of your environment. Sure. now. Because if you're like... Ugh. And then I've learned to like be honest. So like the first time that I was like uh, nervous, I remember I remember you and all the 
the like the lessons that you've been giving me and I said I was honest and I was like you know what I'm very nervous I feel like all these butterflies and I'm because I'm so excited so I was honest once I, right. I let that out yeah then that was of course that was it yeah yeah as I say you can't have the next truthful moment without the first right exactly so you let out the truthful moment and then the next one just came and came and came exactly so yeah, yeah. well cool that's why in the Meisner technique, we always call it a speech instead of a, a monologue because you're always talking to somebody. Whether you're in the room or not, uh, alone or you have a thousand people, you're always talking to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, for two years and a half, and I'm, I started just um, doing uh, announcements, which they have like all the teleprompters, like um, I just said, what are this? And right. then they have the whole teleprompter thing. And I remember when I was in New York Film Academy, we also have that. Like that, um, and what, how do you say, like commercial? No, it's not commercials. It's like well, it's commercials advertising, or advertising, advertising or park. spokesperson. A yeah. No? So it's like in between that you have to do the, the those yeah. announcements. Yeah. So I'm sorry, English is not my first language. So you guys know. <laughs> so here yeah, and there, yeah, I'm you're like. Doing, you're doing fantastic. Yeah, so here and there, I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the words. When we did that, I, I, we also, I also studied that on New York Film Academy. Mm -hmm. So my dad, for example, told me, like, can you do this? Because this is important. Like, it's, it's the one that they paid mm -hmm. for that. So it's like, you kind of have to do it, buy the book and, right. and deliver, give it intention. So, and it's like, it's, he was trying to explain me. And I'm like, well, I've studied. I have it in, in, in theory. Right. <laughs> and I kind of practice. But let's see. But it's just so nice how you practice those things so much in class and right. things like that. I was like, that thing became until this day. I love doing it because right. they put the whole like yeah. word it is because right. I don't really feel the flavor. Right. And I love playing like all the shapes that I can give it. Right. I just I'm upset. I'm still. I think it's one of my favorite things to do. Do all the yeah. and the paper. And yeah. then we still have the paper. It's not even a screen. <laughs> so the lady's going like this. You're like wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun and i i love that yeah. but then they had the social cases and i was like begging to tell because you have to tell the story today right. we have a story of maria that right. has four kids and one of her kids had cancer or whatever right. or things just to put an example right right so those social cases my dad told me that i was like too young like and that's too heavy that it has to be an older person like him like to do it but i re i didn't give up so i was just going through like with the team because you go through the week with the team actually where they live which is in the middle of nowhere in a super poor area right. and like in like the, the conditions are very like tough right but i wanted to go so i can have more connection i'm like that kind of person because like i was like starting getting bored of like doing the same with the four hours and right. i was like Okay, I'm doing this. What's the next step? But once I did the whole thing in the show for right. two years and a half, then I, I was, I'm always like, okay, now what? Like, right. I can't stay still. So then is when I came to LA. And at first I was coming to acting classes. Mm -hmm. And then social media kicked in and started being big. Instagram. I was just alive. Mm -hmm. And I came... To LA. What's the name of your dad's show? I just want oh, to. Oh, in English, would it be Because It's Saturday with Andres? Okay. Then what is the, the name in uh, Peru? Saba oh, well, well not because it used to be Because It's Saturday. Now it's Saturdays with Andres. Okay. Sabados con Andres. Okay. Sabados con Andres. Because I met these two uh, young women uh, around UCLA one time. Mm -hmm. And I knew the name at that time because I was seeing you all the time. Yeah. And I was talking and said, oh, they were from Peru. And I go, hey, I got this, uh, this friend Jojo yeah. her father has. And I mentioned the TV show and they were like, ah! ah. Man, Brian. You know what I love doing? Yeah. I love tapping that subscribe button. Mmm. I love it too, son. And just like all your dates, I tap it last, but nothing's as good as tapping this button. You see Brian here? He's not always doing the best. Financially, mentally, physically, for sure. You want to help keep Brian off the streets of Hollywood? There's a way you can help. Join us on Patreon. You want to tell him what we got on there, buddy? Yes, we have the general admission. We have the backstage. And we have the VIP All Access Pass. So please join today. I'm due for a bath. 
in the arms of <laughs> angel. Because they were probably only 18 or 19, and that was a few years ago. So they were yeah. young when the show was on, and they were all excited. Oh, yeah. we watch that show every weekend. It so it was a big like, show. Yeah, it depends. It's very tricky because there is people that, like my dad, when he used to be the comedian, these are like old school. So mm. those Peruvians that moved for a long time, they might know my dad and not know me because right. then they... And then when I was doing the TV series, which it was mostly for 16, 17, 18 year old girls, 19, it was like right. kind of like a teenager's mm -hmm. TV series. And my dad wasn't on TV. He was like, wasn't on TV like for 10 years. But okay. it got to the point that they were like, oh, that's just Sadie's dad. Right. On that time. Okay. So it's like different crowds like that. Uh, and then now it's like both. Right. right. So. Right. Depending on certain Peruvians might not know me, but right. know him because right. of the, like, the, and then who would it be, like, parents, like that, like, older right. people, and then right. the youngest, like, usually know me. But now, with social media, the old and the new right. mm -hmm. are yeah. just yeah. combining. Yeah. yeah, the world's a small place now. Yeah, I mean, when I came to LA the first time that I was going to school with you, and social media wasn't a thing, like, as much like right. that i saw like a super long path and it was very expensive right. like just not being from here like living apartment like transportation then remember like submitting like auditions yeah. and uploading your photos and the whole thing i was i just saw money coming i was like i need to come with a better plan until then i'm out <laughs> so i left back to peru kept working there and then got back and then I was just going live, getting ready. And my friend is like, you have a lot of people. I was like, well, that's not my followers from Peru. And then she goes, you should like, and then you know how to get ready and put yourself together. You right. can be a beauty influencer. And I wasn't like sure exactly what it was. But then I went to a beauty convention and I just introduced myself to every booth. I, right. I didn't have one piece of a video that a transformation, like something like, decent like mm -hmm. you know with a nice lightning or anything like that right. at all i got a lot of notes i got a lot of business cards so i want to go before that we'll come back uh -huh. to that we'll come back to that so the way i knew you started really getting out there on social media was you put on a little bit of weight and you didn't want the weight on oh, no, so yes. you started well that was another thing because well, it's just like, again, I have a different aspect I'm finding now. When I when I was studying acting there and I was trying to pursue the whole acting thing, I noticed that, yes, in my country, there is a lot of people that are actors. But in L.A., it's so competitive. Like, mm -hmm. people are actors, and on top of that are singers, and on top of that they play piano, and they're gymnastics, right. and there it is. I'm like, I only act. Like, yeah. what, like what do I do? So then it's, I got so traumatized. I was like, what do I have to offer? Right. And I mean, I'm not saying that someone that is, I believe in that, but in my case, because I had other talents. And which I, I dance, but I don't train much dancing because I was overweight. So one thing led to another. And I was like, I need to lose weight. And then Brian met me when I was in my journey of losing like weight. But it was crazy. It was like really fitness, like really, really into fitness. And then people started asking me. That led me to something that I wasn't expecting. They started asking me, how did you lose weight? And the question, they were, it was the same questions over and over. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to make a YouTube channel and just like share everything there. And then that led me to a whole new job because then I started making videos about working out, yeah. like food. Then I got contracts with like sp like uh, nutrition Yeah, for doing your cross CrossFit videos. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And right. I started working on that with a lot of brands. Like it was, I was an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was an, I was like, am I an athlete? I'm not yeah. an actress. I'm an athlete actress. <laughs> I'm like, an athlete I'm now. I'm an athlete. Right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, uh, and that's my first introduction to you because yeah. be getting the social media before you did that's uh, what it was yeah so it was the acting but then then it started the crossfit right but i always even when i did like the crossfit and i did the athlete i always have this like si girly side of me so i was like comparing to my a lot of athletes that are very like tough and stuff right. like that then mm -hmm. is when i decided to combine yes with beauty where i can like put my workouts my you know like some beauty stuff and then mm -hmm. that led me to what i'm doing now but i when i got here i didn't know anything about like the prosthetics that i'm doing wigs right. and hair like that the crazy things i do now 
I didn't know anything. Mm. But that's what I needed. That spark again of something new. Because I, I don't like routines. Yeah. I get bored with routines. So I had stopped you there. So you said, so you had been to the beauty convention and you got a lot of no's. And then. Yeah. Then and you... then uh, I was like, what does it take? So my boyfriend got me my first ring light. And it, that's what exactly I needed. Because even when I loved my death show and I loved acting. It's just, I, I noticed thing again with personality, like when it gets ru like routine, I get bored. And I was like, because the lady that does the, the, that is very famous there, that does this uh, TV series, they're very similar, like, like the stories to me, they are. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that I was so ignorant about it that I didn't know that I just wanted to learn. And I fit and I'm like, you know what? Now there is social media, and I started noticing the little thing that I did here in LA that it was different. It will get a lot of views, and I was like, I think this is it, like where I can learn. And it was a whole process because it entertained me. It kept the sparkle of like, oh, how do I use a ring light? And then again, I was like, okay, and I'm gonna do it with my uh, wall, white wall background, so it looks cleaner. That was like from filming anywhere. I was just with my phone, literally just like this, getting ready mm -hmm. versus like, okay, now I'm going to go on a white wall with my ring light, with my phone still. And then I move into, I move into a two bedroom apartment where I put like now two ring lights. And then I started finding out and getting soft boxes. So, you know, you see your lighting for the makeup. And then I always had my dark hair. That's how he met me. And then I bought my first wig and I started putting it on. It's like, it's just like it's been evolving into all this magical, like entertainment girl mm -hmm. that I'm besides what I am right now. So I love it because I'm still learning uh -huh. every Halloween. This is my third Halloween that I'm doing prosthetics. And there is girls that do it all year around. I don't. I'm still learning. And I'm, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, as long as the sparkle still, is still there. Yeah. And I'm ready like to go back to fitness and combine all these talents right, i want right. to go back to dancing but years go by super quick but i every here and there i call brian because it is important for me to always go back to like connect with the my, foundation of my foundation i'm sometimes i feel trapped because of the way i look but i'm very nerdy very inside i'm very <laughs> nerdy i'm very <laughs> home i barely drink i don't go like to me it's the whole thing about getting ready and pulling up a look Mm -hmm. But I don't really like go out like that and so I go crazy. I'm just yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's me and my sister where we're the same like that. I'm like mostly like watching a bunch of videos. How is the prosthetic going to work? Or actually thinking how I'm going to put this outfit together to go to this place and how I'm going to film it. And I edit my own stuff. I do everything by my own. Mm -hmm. So this is sometimes when I say I get caught in the middle because if I hang out with too many actors, sometimes I get bored. And if I hang out with too many girls that are too girly and too partyish, I also get bored with them. So I'm like constantly, like I, I, I felt judged a lot of times too. Right. Like a lot of times. The only person that never judged me is Fran. No. Thank you. But the world goes around because I've met some of my fellow students with like with Brian that they kind of like, because I know the talent that I have. Like, mm -hmm. me having my nails longer or shorter are not going to make me smarter. Like, I'm like, girl, I know more now. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm very, like, that. I'm very secure of what I know and what I have. It sounds like just your hustler's mentality is like, Well, what? it's because I've been in the, I always say, I might be new in L.A., but I'm not new at this. I've mm -hmm. been exposed to, like, audience since I was seven years old. I've been on stage since I was seven. So, yes, I need help, like, people, for, like, Brian to help me shape. But the first thing is like, I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. I'm not shy. Like <laughs> those are the shy. first thing. Yeah. I'm like, guide me. I don't know what to do with all this. You guide me. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not scared of like someone like, okay, sit there and do this. Like lay on the floor. Like I don't mind that part. But yeah. then I need a guidance of someone like him to like, like shape my art. Right. But I've got people, they're like judging me and they're like, what time passed by in this five years and then they call me to be part of their projects and i'm not interested yeah <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm, yeah it's just like look yeah we didn't value me back then like, right <laughs> right yeah i mean they have to treat you with grace and dignity no matter what part of your, your career are at and then you can come back and work together with people if they treat you that you know treat you properly that's yeah. all yes you know what i mean yeah so, what about this? Have you ever thought of doing like a master class? A lot of people become, you know, uh, famous or successful. Uh -huh. 
they don't have a lot of time for people that don't put in the work because yeah. I've seen the work you put in. You've already yeah. talked about it. I've been there. I've seen it. So teaching is tough. And I understand I've been teaching for years when, when people won't put in the time that you know they can become successful with that time. So I just thought, you know, you'd be a good person to teach because you because you've learned everything from the ground up. You know, you you've learned it one piece of, you know, one eyeliner at a time, you know, to yeah. get to where you are. Have you thought about that putting on a channel um, or a master class? I, I, back to like my training here. I just know so how good I am at certain things. But in Peru, it's I just always think about that. They would be like her teaching, like what experience that she has. Like maybe she has like two or three. Yes, because all my training I ever did here. But I always love that part of like, I dare you, like put me there and tell me what do I have to do and I'll show you how good I am. So right. that's how like I'm so secure of this. But right. that's what happened with the soap opera. So I came with your tra- from New York Film Academy. Then I had Brian Lally's training in between the, the TV series that I was. But let me tell you, again, this lady, I said this on TV and she got so upset. The lady that, oh my God, if they ever translate this to interview, it's going to go fire. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> you want to put the, well, the lady, the, the owner of the company that makes it, but I'm, it's my truth. She got upset because I said that all my training was in the United States that I've never, because there, there is the famous super actors, like. Like, like you, like, let's say, like, big, like, people recognize that they teach right. there. The circle is very small, to be honest. Sure. So, and all of them, they know each other. And then here is Josetti that right. just came and did the work. But I wasn't with them growing. And now I wasn't as consistent because then I left. So I just did, like, three soap operas with her, like, mm. a TV series. Right. She uses, in Peru, it's mostly, like, they use the same people over and over sure. for the most part. So it's very small circle. So when I go on interviews, I said, well, all my training is in the United States. And then she got so aggravated because she actually put me in in a workshop there. But the workshop was, and I was super honest, my dad never allowed me to speak uh, slangs in right. my life. Right. He wouldn't let me like to speak any slangs. And these stories are about people that are like, that speaks a lot of like slang and right, like, right. that behavior. Yeah. So... I feel like Peruvians by nature, a lot of them, they are already like that. But my dad never liked me that having that, like, like how do you say, like, sussiness or whatever. Yeah, I don't know how to kind of street vibe, kind of. Yeah. So street could be, sass. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. didn't, he he just, like, always, like, wanted me to talk, like. Well spoken. Just, right, yeah. Proper. Just, well, yeah, proper, like, normal. Like, no, like. Because a lot of people take that everywhere. Right. And that was what's happening with a lot of the actors. Because they also have an academy right, with it, right. like besides the company that makes us the puppers, they also right. have like acting school, right. like workshops. So she put me there so I can actually get from them that vibe. But I was like, yeah, but that was a training for dad. And I'm like, I was honest. And then my other trainer was a clown. So I always say my training is pure from you. So I feel like if I ever do something or dare to do it, right. a lot of people are going to talk crap, like say, who, her? But I, but it's one of those things that I wouldn't be scared. I could come to Peru with Brian Lally. Like, let me show you how much I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, people don't know how much I know. Well, but um, yeah, maybe you need well, to you know do a master class down there. Down but you Peru. know what I like it is that this is why I love Halloween because those are my moments that people are like, because oh. again, I have that facility of like just coming raw and not being scared of that. A lot of the times, I put even my dark hair wig. Which mm-hmm. no context and which brings like that illusion again of like no of that just my actual self. Right. <laughs> the illusion. The, of, <laughs> the illusion of the, of your real, real self. self. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because uh, when the pandemic hit, we didn't have hair salons. Roots were growing. Right. I was like, I don't know this one. This is me, not that one. Right. <laughs> but that's my real self, not right. this one. But yeah. And your dad got pretty ill during the p- pandemic. Yeah, but, he yeah. got COVID and without Pretty the bad. he was of the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, no, he's fine now. But well, I know I'm glad, but it was, but he got. It was one Ill, of the right? first ones when right. they were really tough. For yeah. Him. Yeah. Yeah. But back to like when you said if I would like to teach, I think I like to teach people that I don't have much patience. I, well, I need yeah, people. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Because, but I like people that put in the work. If you're well, like, yeah, of yeah, course. Of if course. you like it, if you really show me, I don't mind sharing what I know. But I still feel that it would be with someone like you. Like you do your technical part. And then I think right. I'll, I'll fit more in that 
like when we were talking, like entering a room and filling spaces and feeling secure about what you do because you did your homework. Right. Yeah. So, yes. That's like what Seth Rogen said about like, what are you working on? Right, right. Like, yeah, Seth Rogen. You got to be want to, like, you got to be doing the work. Yeah, Seth Rogen, when I was teaching a class with James and Seth was there and he said, if someone comes up to me and says they want help and I say, what have you done? They say nothing. He said, I don't want anything to do with them because you have a you have a phone. You can do something, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the people who have the initiative to get started and do something, you know, and, yeah. then, and then other people can help them along. Well, these days it's even worse because, like, there's a course for everything right. out there. So it's like even if you don't know. Me, yeah. what I learned from editing was the very basics. I, again, I'm near from my academy, like, because they teach you a bunch of little things, right? Mm-hmm. So turn on your first computer and put it there in an iMovie and just create a couple of things. But then from there, there is everything. The rest that I learned, and I still like learning, oh, I want snow. I wonder how you do it. Then you go type that, and then there is a course for that on YouTube. And you add it there. So even now with prosthetics, there's so many tutorials. I was like, I don't even need to go to school. Like, I literally go there, and then the rest does everything is practice. Right. Because it's like you see it, but then, okay, now let me get the prosthetic. Let me get it. Let's see if it blends, if if it comes. The rest is rehearsal. No, right. Just like re- acting. Everything is rehearsal. Right. Well, this is what I was thinking, like, um, next year I want to do my citizenship. Right. But I'm Peruvian, so, like, any of the questions, like, with history, they, they don't click because I've never went to school here. Right. I don't. I mean, I went for a little bit, but not enough to know all those things. Right. But I'm like, I want to bring still my personality into the room, like, whoever is going to interview me. For that, I right. need to know that, like a, like a script, like, right. up and down. So I'm not thinking of when, when is she going to, like, ask these questions. Also, I speak English, but when when it's a script or things like that, I caught myself that it was way harder to learn scripts in English than in Spanish. Right. Because now these are the real, like, mm-hmm. sentences that you have to say it in that particular order. Yeah, so, or, like, yeah. different tones or, or yeah, certain things. Or, yeah. yeah, or there is words that... Sometimes they don't resonate with me, depending on what it is, right? When right. I watch certain movies that are kind of like, I don't know, like very technical, certain words in English, I put my subtitles until the same. Right. I was like, I just need to Well, that's sure. probably with, maybe with some slang too, right? If they're speaking slang, you don't know the words. You know, a lot of... I, I know. I don't I'm know just a not lot. used to it. It's right. just kind of like proving also they curse a lot. I right. don't. Like, it's those things that my dad just didn't let me. Right. So I, that's why I went to her training for that. Right. Right. That's that's it. Then the rest, I give the credit to Brian Lally. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm thinking? It's like when she said, you know, the street kind of thing. It's like, you know, it's like every kid from the suburb now wants to talk like a rapper. Yeah. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's funny when they want to improve also when they want, or I mean, a lot of Latinos, when they want to get into reggaeton music right. all of the sudden they start yo talking like why yeah. <laughs> like you're just singing like, this is not you like talking yeah right but uh i i love the ability of now i can be whoever one i want to be when right. i want to be and i think that social media like tiktok specifically before it was very hard like women wouldn't like show themselves naturally right but because there is a lot of this transitions and things people like transforming it got into like a lot of women are showing more like their selves raw so they can yeah. do the changes with outfits. So I, I'm liking yeah. those things. Without the catfish filter? I know, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm a mayor one there. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend already. Like the good thing is like I have a, a good solid relationship. Right. I always tell him, just see like the vision when we <laughs> leave this house and then yeah. everybody likes watching just that. Right. Stay with that. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. the vision so back so, to sorry go ahead no go ahead you go i was gonna say the how with halloween coming up we talked about it before we started yeah you had a big viral your first prosthetic transformation yes the grinch uh there it is <laughs> oh yeah uh, yeah <laughs> you <laughs> crushed that You've been watching Brian Lally, Hollywood Native. Now I want to talk to you about something I'm really passionate about, and that's teaching acting. So I co-founded Lola's Acting School with my son, Kyle Lally, Lally or Lally Acting School. I've been acting for a a long time now, of 100-plus credits on IMDb, 
hundreds of plays I've been involved with over the years. And I just want to share that experience with you. What we do differently here at Lola's is we give you practical advice that you can use on a movie set, on a play, an audition, anywhere. We give you the foundation to build yourself as a great actor. If you come to us, you don't know anything. We can teach you everything you need to know to be comfortable on a, on a set and to excel. Don't just listen to me. Look at what our students are doing. Daryl Wesley, who is writing on two hit shows, The Game and The Upshaws, and Ben Barrett, who is a series regular on The Politician, Megan Davis, who is uh, playing Amber Heard in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard story. Come check us out. We're at the Historic Arc Theater in the NoHo Arts District. You ever want to try plant-based eating? I have. What, you're a little confused, overwhelmed, you don't know how to get started? Definitely. Well, there's a simple answer to that. Go to Debbie Chu's Chew on Vegan YouTube channel. Debbie Chu is a plant-based RN. I've known Debbie for over 38 years, and she's very good at what she does. You go to the channel, and there's 300, over 300 recipes. They're simple, easy to make, and they're delicious. If you want to try it, you just might get healthy. Give it a shot. Chew on Vegan. When I saw myself, I was like, oh, my God, I want to hug my own self. Yeah. I, want to come, I wanted to come out of myself and take a picture with my Grinch. I yeah. was like, I, I loved it. Yeah. We need it, a Grinch, too, where you play his wife. Well, what I did is, like, with Photoshop, I did a look of, like, with green hair, like, women. And mm -hmm. I put me okay. Like, oh, okay. Like, so right. next yeah. to the Grinch. But that was just on a Photoshop. Yeah. So, but, well, um, uh, even with the lips, I still get a vibe of, like... <laughs> There and then that's go. how I say I take off my nails. That's mm -hmm. what I'm telling you. It's way easier to work because later, if you fast forward, I'm gluing a lot of the fuss, which it gets. See, this, so this is why oh, I wow. need my, I can't use nails. See, like already my fingers are yeah. all like with the paint and Dang. all that. And then I started cutting these things. And then... You stick it with this special glue, and I show there, like, uh, if you go somewhere there, I'm showing there how a mess my studio is, because I like to film there. Look <laughs> at all that, all hey, the fuss. That's what it takes. It gets in your way, because then you're trying to, see, to to take yeah, it off like your fingers. And you. Yeah, yeah, and it, it was like... How many total hours did this take you? That's a filming for a TikTok that mm. I'm trying to do. So in order to make sure that the transitions are well, so with my hands that are already all sticky, I'm with the computer editing in that ah. moment live. Yeah. So that it's a tough one because you need to make sure that it's going to land. Oh, nice. So I just need to make sure that the lips are sinking and everything. And this is not with flips. Like there is another one that has 9 million views on YouTube, like 9.4 million. So hopefully right. one day it gets to 10 million. I was wearing those same contacts you had in. I did a TV show, uh, Aaron Spelling TV show called The Kindred, The Embraced, and I turned into a vampire. That's me in the computer, so that's me, like, usually. <laughs> yeah, you got your setup. Like, 2 a.m. already. It's like, I didn't used to film all that, but now I think it's important because for moments like this, that you and I were talking, I was like, okay. Right. If I don't have the image, just say in your imagination, right? Right. So now I document everything. I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. You know, there was a proper in English. They made it. It's called Ugly Betty. Yeah. But so that was the one that has 9 million. Oh, there it is. That's the one has 9.4 million. Oh, America views. Ferrara. Yeah, that was the, it was the hardest one because it's literally as you go. Yeah. And you, you're it. editing this. Yes. As I'm going, because you need to make sure that, that when you go like that, it goes. Ah. Uh. Because if it doesn't, then you have a big gap in between words in, in the song. And that was super hard, like yeah. the pulling the clothes. Because yeah. you pull the one that you have, you put the other one, but then you grab again that close to do it like mm -hmm. this. Whoa. So, again, I think this is the part that's my favorite part because I can show that my raw self myself and start mm -hmm. from the beginning and, like, my abilities with that. Yeah, that's amazing. Then I did Ursula. That was a tough one. It's, uh, like, from The Little Mermaid. Right, because yeah. the prosthetic of that one, it was with this big ching. Oh shit! Holy shit! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dang. oh my god! I you, know. So you kill these. These are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. This is amazing. 
Yeah, and then I mean, of course, I do glue nails here and there for depending on what it is, mm -hmm. like what outfit. Right. But I like to take people through the whole thing, and then I have my PJs usually underneath or just like sweatpants, and then sometimes you cut yourself like I don't know the camera you have to adjust it and you're with this whole thing one day the whole thing came down my whole background <laughs> like you're it gets on it is tricky but you know what who's working the, the, the camera is that is me it, everything it, i do it on so, my own oh that i call always my sister like you're yeah. just like for a few right. seconds because and then that's my still camera just there right and i like to show there like my laptop this what am i gonna do and i've been doing this this past year the last year i didn't do it i was like i think it's fun to show people what it takes more than... Well, of course. Because that TikTok stuff is one minute. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, people think they can just grab a phone and uh, become an influencer. Well, you know and I, I mean? didn't know any of this, right? right. Nothing. Well, like, I, I started... Well, that's the most important thing to me when I say that you've learned from one eyeliner pencil to a yeah. you know, to an eyelash brush, you know, that you learned it from, from the ground up. And you know up. what, Brian? It's like... You might think, wow, Josetti does all those things. But to be honest, there is someone out there that does way more. Like, there is people that do sure. this every day for yeah. the whole year. Right. And then there is some crazy body paintings now. Like, yeah. before, it was just a makeup artist. Now, the same actors, the same people that are doing the acting, they, they are also the makeup artists that right. does. And it, it turns out that it's also a beautiful woman that is into fitness and things and all this. So it's like the the bar is so high. So it is motivation. And I always said, yes, it is a lot of competition. Let's put it that way. But I'd rather be in a place that it's full of that motivation yeah. than being somewhere that I've just, I got bored there. It's right. not, I'm not saying my fellow actors, like, I mean, they're the, the best ones there, the biggest ones, the most famous, the actors and all that. But to me, it wasn't impressing me because right. I'm used to living here. This is Hollywood to me. Like, you right. know, this is where, like the movies that I used to watch being like a kid, like a right. high school music was called. Well, all these kids are just like, you know, like being dancers and trying to get in the schools and just right. making the difference. So that was the dream coming from Peru. Right. And also sometimes people, we take it for granted. Like now... I'm like so close working like with Disney, like or working like Hello Kitty brands like right. that. And then you go to event premieres and openings and things like that. And sometimes I'm so busy doing this over and over that every time I go to Peru and there I'm like, let's say missing one event. And I go on TikTok when they say, oh, in L.A., they just opened this, let's say right. Hello Kitty Cafe, whatever. Right. And then I think about how many people is dreaming to go to L.A., right. to that far place, to meet this place that they said exists. Right. And I'm privileged to be at the opening days and all that. So that's my mode. I always keep reminding oh, how, like, where I've gone and where I'm at is, like, everyone that is pursuing those things, like that dream. So tell me where you're going. One of the things I want to start pursuing, and I think I'm there, it's just about connections and it's just about time also. Through Disney, when I do the influencers and which it leads to Hot Topic and all that, they invite you to all these uh, events. Like they did the, uh, what's it called? The Nightmare Before Christmas, the right. whole symphonic and the actors were there like that. Yeah. And it was a private party for that. Okay. So, but those same people, they usually, then they start getting invited to like the event premieres. When I moved here, I was also covering certain things like that with Warner Brothers right. for the show, like my dad's show. Right. I would like to pursue, take it from, instead of just going to the event and put it on my social media, I already had a taste of that, like interviewing people, like to put it there in the show. Right. I would like to slowly transition into that and not, I mean, not without leaving the things I'm doing, but I think it's easier to get through that way than me presenting it. Hey, I would like to do interviews of the red carpets, like one more person does. Right. But as an influencer, I can be there and I can kind of mm. look when you vlog, but use all those images for it. Right. How do you say segment in the show? Uh -huh. Things like that. Yes. And have that as another channel. Joe said he does. When I created the Body Nation, I did it because it was just related to fitness and my Joe said it was just to put all my acting gigs like i just wanted a place where it was easier to find my stuff right but i keep it separate just at these everything that it's me right and then the body nation it will be anything that it would be fitness right so i wouldn't have a separate channel just 
there that already right is working. Okay. Close people. Yeah. I mean, I would like to pursue things like that. I've seen these days a lot, like a lot of actors. I mean, it's it's kind of tricky because I know that there is a lot of people that put in the work there. But I also feel like a lot of influencers through their big platforms, this is how they got to also to movies, to Hollywood and or like music videos or things like that. Because of I feel this is my theory. I don't know if it's exactly the reason. I think like I was like, why they're hiring influencers for certain movies when they're not actors? And I think it's because of like if it's a, like kind of like an independent movie or at some point, if you have someone that has a following, because that way you can promote well, yeah, you bring, bring that audience to it well, automatically. Uh, well, yes. I mean, before you had to go, I mean, I'm sure you still have to go to like uh, audition, but that was so frustrating for me. Like, Brian, that was messing with my feelings so right. bad. Right. So bad because you start questioning, I am good or this. And maybe some, they're not even looking for someone like you. You just don't match the, the, the character. You just don't match up with a, a lead. They already have cast. They yeah, might yeah, want maybe it has taller. nothing to do with, it, with, your, with you being good no, or bad or no, anything, right? No, it doesn't. Right? Most of the time, it doesn't. Yeah. But what I like from social media is like since you're already there, you do what is your passion, all the things that you're good at. And then someone sees it, and they're like, you know what? Just said it could be good for, you know, so let's say I love all the Disney and all that entertainment right. part. By displaying it there, then I get um, yeah. contacted by a lot of even more, like, Disney stuff and that. So they see that. But I also like my also my other sexy part or, like, my fashionista side. Right. So I'm always trying to balance how I, I'm posting my things. Like, not too much Disney because then a lot of people are going to think I just do that. Yeah. Or you, you putting yourself out there in different ways, trying, I feel like, yes, can lead, yeah, you, yeah. lead you down so many different yeah. roads. I mean, I would like to start, like, I don't know if it exists such a thing. Like, in you know how there's these kits that they do, like, uh, comedy skits on, on social media sure. or channels? Yeah. But uh, this is why I came here. I like to just go anywhere that I can also talk about the other things I do. Because I bet a lot of the people that now know me, they have no idea that I'm an actor, too. Right. So... Yeah. I love art, I, I, Brian. I can't say one thing because all of that yeah. is sparkles, and I Boy, just love you're it all. You're also a motivational speaker, from what I'm saying. <laughs> See, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a singer. If I was a singer, Brian, we'll be. I'll be, be the next off. game over. I'll be the main. <laughs> no, the, the thing is, you know, you talk about the social media going over to acting. You know, I've got now that I've got almost two hundred thousand followers on huh? TikTok. You uh, do? Yeah. You didn't know that? No, and I don't follow about? you. What? Oh, my God, on TikTok? Gramps. M no. MTV Gramps. MTV Gramps. Look it up. Excuse me, Brian. I had 200,000, but I haven't po I haven't uh, posted right. lately. But oh I'm getting God. so many more <laughs> auditions. Brian Lally, I didn't know this. And why I'm not invited? Wait, this is too much. <laughs> I'm out. I'm feeling insulted. You have all this? Yeah, why aren't you following me? Yeah, you're I, insulted. Follow you're doing the best defense as a good offense. You're taking out on me. You're like, I didn't follow you, and it's your fault. <laughs> but I didn't like. I didn't know this. Yeah. And look at your videos. Nice you're doing mate. better than me on TikTok. Ten and a half million on that pimp video, because you know what, pimping is easy. <laughs> That's another thing. When TikTok started, I was like, I refuse just to keep doing all these little silly dances. I'm like, right. I'm more than that. Right. I can do more than I'm, I'm still doing them because because right. pimping is easy. Pimping is <laughs> easy. <laughs> That's the easy way. I'm like, that's what and I like that's to why say. I do it. I'm like, let me show you my body now that I have your attention. <laughs> like, let me yeah. go check Brian's podcast. <laughs> we should start like that. This podcast. I'll put. I'll send you some images. Like, and like very like. Like laundry. Now that Seductive. we have your attention, now that we have your attention, <laughs> we have a podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> We've been sitting around watching before you got here, watching your videos, dancing and doing, doing stuff. Like, but yeah, all the things I could do. What the heck, man? We just hanging out. I just you need know. to sing. I I can't sing. Well, I can get like what's it called auto tune then, right? A lot of them do auto tune. Oh my god! Why not? Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like pimping. Auto tune is easy. <laughs> it's easy. Who it's said auto tune easy. wasn't I easy? I always say like all the only thing I need is sing because I have the attitude, I have the looks, I have it all. I can dance, but let me tell you this much. Let me tell you something I know. You're gonna figure it out. I know. You're gonna be out there like Ariana Grande. Well, and... back to the, the the influencers. There is this uh Latina one and and 
her boyfriend, it's um, very big also into the reggaeton and Aaron. Like, they did a song together. It's like they... But I don't believe as much of the song and the talent is because if not, all all the people that are in the train stations in New York, they'll be famous. Right. It's just the right people yeah. and the right mon amount of money too, like to get it there. But my point is like they have the right people and they did this collab song and it just, it blew. So right. I think I'm going to invest my money on that one. <laughs> 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 Who do I have to pay for it? Give me a good song. Right. And what's your sister doing? She's your partner in crime or what's yeah, she doing? Yeah, she's my partner in crime. She's in Peru. Right. She's coming back in two more weeks. Okay. She was getting some surgeries because she got the gastric sleep operation. And this okay. was years ago. So she had like some, you know, when you lose so much weight. Yeah, yeah. So she had some like extra things. Like this that. is something she asked you to talk about on the on the podcast. I know, she's good because <laughs> she's always like she's so she's super old. She's like me. She's my mini me. She's yeah. twenty two. Yeah. I'm thirty five. But we play twins, believe yeah. it or not. Oh. Yes. Yeah. And we do look alike, like a lot. Everybody thinks that we're twins. And yeah. Yeah. I was like, I have a good doctor. Now. There you go. <laughs> Several of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good doctor. Yeah. But um, nothing. I mean, that's about it. I think. I don't know. Anything else you want to <laughs> No, I'm just wonder, wondering it. about your, your future. No, Jojo, that's everything I wanted to talk about, the work you put in and, and where, you're, where you got to, and you're still growing all the time. But this is, as I said I, you know, earlier, I've been there. I've been to the apartment. I've seen the setup. The I've seen the, the <laughs> hey, you know what? It all can't be pretty on the, on the outside, you know, uh, hard, behind the scenes. Yeah, it is hard to tell for me. Like, I mean, I guess if I was just an actor, it would be easier, the path. But as I go, I always try to listen to my heart, try to like just um, be, I'm, I'm very present as you can see. So when you texted me, I was like recovering from my surgery. He right. was like, I want to have you. But it was there the whole time in the back of my, my, on my mind. Let, let's clear this up in the Me Too generation. I said, I want to have you on the podcast. Yes. I didn't say I want to have you. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Hi, Jojo. Well, I he wanted have to have you. me in the podcast. <laughs> yes. And then I was like, I had it in my head. I was like, okay, let me like get better and I'll come see you. But it's one of those things that I could have just also like, because I'm not really, I, I'm, I don't think I've ever done a podcast. I have done a podcast. I don't think so. I can't say that yeah. anymore yeah, there because you, you are number one here. Yeah. But I I enjoy every aspect. I I don't even know how to say it. I I do value this like taking my breaks like right. from the same. I'm very spiritual, so it's very hard with the type of work I do, and with the people that I usually socialize. They're not like my true true friends. They're my fellow like um, co-workers or things like that. But I have very uh, few friends, and most of them are like very nerdy and into their craft. But with Brian, it's always a pleasure, and I will always come anywhere he's at, mm. as many hours that it takes me to drive. Mm. And yeah. I, I appreciate it. What about this? What about the uh, future for your father and maybe you guys collaborating in the future? Do we have some of that? Well, in general, even when I stop being the co-host there, I will always go like two to three times a year, mm -hmm. and I will stay like for two weeks or three weeks, and I will host a show when me and my sister host the show with him. And one of the things, and my sister also noticed that when we're exposed on TV there in Peru, constant like interviews and we're mm -hmm. on the show, you come back renewed to this. It helps you a lot with even things like this, because right. sometimes when you're not trained, people will get nervous. Oh, they're right. going to ask me what are they going to do. So this has become second nature. Mm -hmm. For Genesis, it was very hard, but then through the show, doing things like that, then she got used to here, like going to anywhere. If they asked her like to do certain things, now she's not shy. So it's like the practice because you're constantly practicing. Sure. Now, once the show is going to start in Mexico, we're going to do the same because the show is not also going to, it's going to air in Mexico and like 26 more countries, like the Latin community. So... I mean, it's not that hard to see the future because in, what happens in the Latin community, when you make it in Mexico, you know, when you go to your cable, you have Univision, Telemundo, right. all these things. So when you're famous in Mexico, you're automatically starting being famous in the U.S., the Latino community. Right. Especially with Mexico, because everything that airs in Mexico, it's like if you turn one of those channels that they talk about famous people. Yeah. 
it's about Mexican people, right. mostly, of what's happening there. Because all the right. papas, they put it right. in Telemundo, Univision, and all this. And so your, so your father's show is going to air in Mexico? In Mexico, yes. I played that. Santa Claus, you know, for the Spanish channels for Kmart. So I was famous in Mexico for a minute. <laughs> we have to do Santa. I, oh, I was uh, Mrs. Claus. At Santa, well, I had a friend that did Santa Claus, and I did Mrs. Claus there for, you go. for one Christmas. Uh, Como no? Come on that's all you know <laughs> and that, that's i gave it. all of it all of my spanish right there he's Come my on. kfc guy i know it stopped you he, he went to an audition and came back to class dressed like that i was like oh my uh, god i need a picture yeah. with him yeah. have you seen his recent video where he fights oh, you haven't seen that i gotta Ronald see that McDonald that isn't uh, in, uh in it's a not McDonald's. posted yet it's gonna TikTok. i'm gonna I show you this when when this is over because it's, it hasn't been posted yet but it's Brian gonna be posted not soon big on social media but he's huge on tiktok and i didn't even yeah. know this like, yeah. How yeah. Is this i got twenty one thousand on instagram twenty one thousand on instagram when did you start it that's that's what last we year, eight, eight, eight months, months ago. Eight, nine yeah. months. And you grew like so. Isn't it crazy how it connects? I got a few more that are good. He and I have done, uh, we're doing a series. We've done one that's going to go big. And then the one I did at, uh, at McDonald's is uh, is going to go big. What do you so. think about social media and like, I don't know, I'm too weird, right? <laughs> what well, I mean, just... look, look, people my age that aren't big on social media. This is helping me get jobs. There's not people my this age. This is what I'm telling you. It's well, like... this is what I'm telling the other people that are that are older. You... My agents like, yeah, the casting people call and they ask you got anybody on social media. I've been, I'm up for some big films right now. This is what I'm telling you. So now with social media, you get legit jobs. I feel like now it gives you. It, there is another option how to get there. There is yeah. not just one path. It gives you like a, a one up no, on someone yeah. who doesn't. Yeah, and then now, remember, and then if you were an actor, you want to make it to the big screen. That was a long process. Right. Now there is so many independent movies that they put it on Netflix right. and everywhere. So it's just way easier to make it there. I feel like so. And that's definitely a motivation to put the hustle. Because back then, I was discouraged like to the point I was like, no. I need yeah. to, if I'm going to come back, I better yeah. come back with a better plan because this is yeah. too expensive. It all felt like out of your hands. But with social media, it kind of puts the ball in your court a little right? bit. Yeah. It gave you life again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm doing it. We have a whole series that he created where I play his father. Yeah. And he created that. We've got some great videos. People do that, and through like I remember on Instagram, it was very popular. Like even on I, like when it was IGTV, like mm -hmm. that, they will yeah. create like whole series, For and sure. you will put it there, like little episodes of whatever you decided to do. A lot of comedians did that, so mm -hmm. it's just I think it's just wonderful. I love social media for that. I mean, of course, it opens a full world of worldwide now. It's right. competitive because you meet people that you love that they live across the world. But then also united a lot of people. Like right. I had people that I've met that are dancers that I haven't met them in person. But I was like, if I go there, then we're going to meet and we're going to work and we're going to do this. So it's just, it's, it's magical. Yeah. I love it. That's it. We got some big stuff coming up soon. I hope yeah. you make me part of one of those now. Since you're what are you so talking great. about? Yeah. You're the queen. Yeah, we need to get you in an episode for sure. You're the queen. We should do it sometime in October. And I'm not going to have my nails. Let's do something that is not like me right. looking like this. Yeah, I was having ideas just watching you, these videos this, of yeah. like, you do one of these crazy... It's harder for me to turn into my, uh, I always call it my original self when I have mm -hmm. my nails on because this is like it's there yeah. but in october is when i don't have nails and when i can like mostly look the most natural yeah. mm -hmm. that i can look like take off my contacts rip off my wigs and my hair my fake hair all yeah. Yeah. we're gonna do a video so. we're gonna come knock on your door at machu picchu <laughs> why, <laughs> why not <laughs> all right yeah I think that was done. amazing super yeah. inspiring thank yeah. you i know i've talked a lot but it's just it's always hard for me okay where do we even start when the story is kind right. of like long yeah uh, every, i yeah. mean In instagram and camera? tiktok is josetti one and on youtube josetti hurtado you can find me like that twitter josetti hurtado Je josetti hurtado is spelled h-u-r-t-a-d-o that's Perfect. hurtado we just want to make sure they can find you well, you're not going to put it down there? Oh, yeah, we can put it down. Come on, hey, look, Brian. Come on, uh, hang on a segment. I'm <laughs> trying to get you all the advertising I can, and you're, and you're bagging You'll on me for it? You'll find all down there in the I'm link cutting below. This out. Everything's going to be out. in the description box of all that. I'm going with Josetti Garcia. My goodness. <laughs> that one, right? No, but... I feel uh, like she didn't spell it. That's what I heard. And yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very happy to be here, Brian. 
thank me, you so me much. too yeah. well thank cool you. thank you for coming to our studio it's a it was a a long drive and i appreciate you taking the time to do that so thank you